Okay, welcome back to HVAC Tech Talk with Chad Padilla. Today we're going to look at a thermocouple. What actually is a thermocouple? What is it made of and how does it work? Um, here's a thermocouple here. This top portion up here, uh, which is welded, is called the hot junction. Inside of this section on the inner uh, area is a dissimilar metal, which is called the cold junction. When the hot junction is heated, as a manufacturer requests that you heat it in the first half inch. That is one half inch right there. Uh, that's where the flame sh should hit. And then it creates millivolts through the dissimilar metals. Uh, you have your copper sleeve that comes around. And then you can see we have a copper uh, wire that uh, is inside of the copper sleeve. It's called the inner wire lead. You have your attaching uh, nut, you have a lock washer, and you have your tin plated contact, which makes contact with the gas valve at this point. Now we're going to look at this because this is called the electromagnetic power unit. So I'm going to unscrew this and I'm going to unscrew this and pull this out and we're going to look at the parts of, uh, of this electromagnetic unit that um, allow the thermocouple to operate. Okay, we've removed the uh, electromagnetic power unit and uh, here is our main spring. Okay, our main spring pushes against a lever on the interior if you can see that pushes a lever on the interior, which the lever sits in this position with a cup, uh, rubber cup on the other end. And when it's pushed up, the cup holds the gas from flowing anywhere. When the, the uh, spring is released and the, mag the magnets attract the uh, keeper plate, it drops, allowing flow to the pilot tube. So let's look at that right now. So we're going to take off this section here. And we're going to look at the windings around these two steel posts. When the millivolts come through your thermocouple and they uh, send the millivolts through here, they magnetize these two steel posts, which pulls in the, the mainspring. And this is what's called the keeper. The keeper gets attached to it. So it looks somewhat like that. I don't know if you see it through that clear section, but it pulls that up, allows the gas to flow through the pilot. The pilot stays uh, lit as long as it's producing a minimum of 20 millivolts. I mean, you can go down to 17, but if you're down below 20 millivolts, you need to either clean or replace your thermocouple. So what we're going to do is earlier today, we changed the gas valve on this Linux unit, and we're going to do a live millivolt check on our thermocouple. Okay. See you in a moment. Okay. Earlier today, I replaced the gas valve and the thermocouple on this Linux 80% atmospheric furnace. So uh, there's two wrenches that you're going to need when you're working with the uh, pilot assembly. That is a 7 16 inch open end wrench. That fits the nut for that. The other is for the thermocouple. It's a 3 8 inch open end wrench. So I have the furnace running right now. I'm going to unplug it because I definitely don't want to be creating any kind of contacts in here while its electricity is running. One of the things that I like to do whenever I'm working on, on any electrical appliance is I like to use my, uh, my Greeley voltage detector. This detects any volts around between 50 to 500. So I just turn it to on. I come here, I've got voltage. The other thing I like to do, because this is a house that's at least 20 years old, is I like to take I like to ensure that I have the correct continuity and uh, inside my switch or inside my plug in this uh, instance. Um, so I plug it in. If I have the red and the orange, it is correct. That's what it states. So now I know that I have the correct polarity inside of my switch. Many years ago, uh, they weren't concerned with the polarity as much as they are now. So let me move into uh, taking the uh, furnace turning it, turning it into the off position. So we're shut down and I'm going to, I'm going to remove the, the thermocouple. Now the, it really, all you need to do is hand tighten it in a quarter turn. So I should not have to move this very much at all before I use my, my fingers to loosen it the rest of the way. Okay. So there we are there and then I'll be able to remove this from here. Pilots out. And 
and my thermocouple's out. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to give myself room. I'm going to attach my voltage meter to my thermocouple. And to do that, I'm going to need a couple alligator clips. So I'm going to get my alligator clips out. Okay. I have a positive lead for my, for my voltage meter. Put this in. And I will attach my positive lead to the copper sleeve. And I will take an alligator clip to the tin section. And I will attach that to my common lead. I will select millivolts on my machine. You can see the uh, millivolt signal there, the small m with, with a large v, or the DC voltage is a straight line with three dashes underneath it, okay? So I'm going to need to light this pilot, and we'll do a reading in just a moment. There we go. We're hooked up correctly. We're at 37.5, 37.8. I mean, we're, we have a really strong reading on our, on our thermocouple. Again, just relax while you're watching this because at the end of this, we're going to pan into some uh, papers that I've drawn up everything and explained all of this to you. But again, uh, there is, I, I've heard that there's a difference in polarity if you hook up the red, your, your positive lead and your common lead, but I've tested both ways. Um, just make sure that, that one of the leads goes to the copper sleeve and the other one goes to your uh, tin plated connector and you will get your reading. Okay, we've done our pilot test. We know that we've achieved the millivolts that we want to have, so I'm going to go ahead and let go. The pilot will, will turn off. I will turn, turn this to the off position. It's in the off position now. I will remove my leads. Okay, while I'm working on the furnace, we've checked for uh, correct continuity, and we checked to see that we do have voltage there. I just want to do a test to see what voltage I do have. I set my, uh, my meter on voltage. Uh, it's a it's a kind of a swirly line with a uh, V. So I'm going to go ahead and, and plug this in and make sure that I've got I've got 119.9 volts, 119.8. So I'm right in where I want to go. So then I want to check my 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 ground. Uh, I want to check my neutral to ground to make sure I don't have anything. I don't. Then I want to check my my line voltage to ground, I have 100 and, 100 and line voltage to ground, I have the same reading that I had earlier, I have 119.9. You can see I have 119.9. Now I'm going to check my, my ground to, to ground, I should have zero there. And no voltage. Okay?